Welcome back to We'll Run For. This is your host, Tom. And with me, as always, are Aaron. Hello. Michael. Hello. And Diana. Hello. How's it going, everyone? Not bad. I'm exhausted. Yeah. We're all tired for some reason. We are all (laughs) tired, I think. It's afternoon, too. (laughs) Yeah. Like, we shouldn't be. But I traveled this week, and then I got up and I did Orange Theory this morning, and I got all the splat points. I think nice. I got the most I've gotten so far. Mm. So I got like twenty four, which is oh, wow. I think it's a lot. That's that a lot, a good isn't amount. it? Yeah, that's a lot. I have no idea because I don't even know what a splat point is. Yeah, I don't understand it either. But I just try and get as many as I can. I will say, I think the cultish nature of this orange theory <laughs> is extremely motivating because you've loved it i, I am you really like in it. it to win it awesome. i went when i was in arizona yeah at oh, like wow, 5 a.m okay. it is fun i, I enjoy it. well it's way yeah. easier to go at 5 a.m out there than it is here yeah 100 <laughs> percent. and it's like a mile away from the hotel oh, and nice. so i had to walk at like 4 30 in the morning oh, my it, god. it was like night outside oh my god when I went, like, it wasn't even like, ooh, the sun is creeping up. No, it was like night Pitch when black. I got up and I walked. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. But now I'm exhausted and I'm going to take a nap after we record. How about you guys? How you doing? Um, I don't know. What are, what's going on? I worked. I'm tired because I'm on at work. I every three weeks I'm on call for trouble calls because we do maintenance work for DOT on the roads. So the other night we got one at like two o'clock in the morning and I was up for an hour and then I couldn't fall back to sleep for a while. So I'm not quite caught back up on sleep correctly. I'm so tired. I could fall asleep with my face in my crotch. Oh God. Like my cat right now. (laughs) (laughs) Or Tom. (laughs) Maybe he should be on our cover this week. He was literally cleaning himself and is doubled over like cleaning his uh, stomach. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but fell but fell asleep in the middle of it. It's actually pretty funny. I might I actually it. have to show a picture of this now. It might be have to be in one of our stories oh, <laughs> next <God>. week. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. so good. Oh, so we had good. our live show the other day. Oh, we yeah. did. I forgot about that. Yes. If you haven't gone good. back, I meant to take a clip of it. Actually, I have a clip of it. I just never uh, posted it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm terrible at that. Um, yeah, if you haven't checked it out, go ahead to our YouTube and just look up Will Run For, and the live show is in the playlist under live shows now. Yeah. So did we get any five-star reviews this week? I don't know. Michael? Nope. Anything? No. No, nothing. No. Womp, womp. Remember, your yeah. five-star reviews get a... Uh, Five miles and a task, legal, of course. Uh, <laughs> they're important to, I guess, get the show out there, but also uh, just sharing it with people is important. So, you know, you can do that as well. I'll I'll even up the ante. Like, I'll do a 10K for a five-star review. Wow. Oh, look at you. And, 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 I mean, you can suggest a task, but if you want to give me, like, five or so things to look for a la scavenger hunt Ooh. oh that's a good idea, that's a, good idea. Yeah, that's a cute idea i'll do that and i'll take pictures and i'll story it because mm. i am a glutton for punishment and we would love additional reviews i know we have um a handful of new listeners so you know please leave us a five-star review you'll get a 10k and you can send me on a wild goose chase <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's it's not that we're desperate for self validation so much as it helps other listeners like find you yeah, find yeah, us. Yeah. And someone asked Tom to actually find a wild goose. That's something good for that a scavenger is a good hunt. Idea. Oh, yeah. That would be actually kind of hilarious. Yeah. Also, also, Aaron, speak for yourself. I am desperate for validation. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh gosh. So, what are we running for this week? Go ahead, Michael. What are you What are you running for? Uh, well, I'm just running for this final cold day, hopefully, <laughs> since it's 40 freaking degrees out yeah. and windy. Yeah, this morning I, it was feels like 20 when I woke up. Yeah, 
I why I don't understand. It's I love April ninety 2nd. degree weather. <laughs> you like yeah? You went from ninety oh, yeah. to twenty five or whatever it was last night. Yeah, I went shopping with my mom today, and I didn't even bring a coat, and it was <laughs> so cold. Yeah, it's cold again today, but hopefully this is it. Hopefully this is the end. Yeah, I love it. I I just love when it was. What are we running for this week? And Michael just goes, oh, God. Because <laughs> <laughs> he hates the cold. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm over here just running for cake. Lots of cake. Uh, we I picked up a uh, Carlo's big fud- chocolate fudge cake. I actually Ooh. went there to go get like a, like a couple little individual cakes because it's uh, Michael's son's birthday tomorrow. So I went to go get like some little ones. And they, it's Easter, and I forgot that it's going to be Easter. So yeah. the bakery was packed and crazy, and they had very <laughs> little options. So instead, I had to get a whole Carlos cake. And so I'll be eating a lot of cake this week. So I'll be running so I can eat that cake. We're recording this on Good Friday, so happy Good Friday to all that observe. But it's also National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. Um, so I'm running for the two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches I had for lunch. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my god! There was a lot of judgment in that. I know the, the things I do when you're not in the house. Is, uh. And I'm also, and we're going to mention this a little bit later. I'm also running for our virtually live race that takes place next Saturday, or I guess when this is released, this Saturday. So whoop, whoop. by the time you hear this, you can't register anymore. But just wanted to give a shout out to everybody that has registered. It's going to be an awesome event. Love it. Oh, and then uh, for me, because Easter is coming up and I spelled it the way I say it in the show notes, just because I, I, I just love it so much, but I'm running for Reese eggs, not Reese's Reese. Reese. And um, Reese PC. Trumpa is totally going to troll you now. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, but I wait all year because this is the best shape. I know they yeah. do pumpkin and I know they do Christmas trees. But the eggs are the best shape. A hundred percent. I'll stand by that. I agree with you. They are. There's nothing to tussle about on on that one. I think you get the most peanut Peanut butter butter out of those. Yes, 100%. Well, do we have any uh, goals? Goal getters? We do. We have a ton of goal getters. We do. Yeah, we've Everyone is like motivated by the warm weather, I guess. And now it's time for our Will Run For Goal Getters. Congrats on making your goals, you getters. (laughs) <laughs> All right, we got our goal getters this week. I think I'm losing my voice from allergies too, by the way, which happens. Uh, You're not the, the sex- ball of energy. You're not yeah. the sex kitten you normally are. Uh, yeah, like uh, this time of year, like the, the trees are starting to pop, and I think uh, that's a goal of mine to get rid of these allergies since <laughs> I can't do anything about it. Uh, Kate R mentioned that her son Miles and her have a new daily physical fitness activity chart that they do together. That's really yeah. awesome. I love that. 15- He's itty bitty too. <laughs> oh my god. I I just misread this and thought it said fifteen minutes of beer crawls. <laughs> uh, but it is fifteen minutes of bear crawls, jumping jacks, et cetera, with three with a three year old. What could go wrong? Oh, I love it. Also, her kids she has two little boys and they're they're into metal. And when they're playing metal, um, like Kate will post like videos of them like just dancing to heavy metal, and it's nice. the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Laura Duxon got her sub 30 minute 5K and <gasps> an unexpected hey. PR. She hit a 2918. That's Get so it. awesome. awesome. I, love that. I knew Congrats. she was working hard with that. She had the coach and everything. Megan uh, Gorney, still going good, pain free the whole month after recovery, and uh, her speed is starting to come back too. Nice. Whoop. Jessica Grant, she uh, her upcoming goal is doing the Wheel Run for Virtually Live race with her seven year old daughter, and the goal is to go two miles with her. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I when I saw that she had signed up her daughter, it's adorable. Oh, Can't and wait she to also see pictures. yeah, and she also uh, PR the Gates River Run 15K in Jacksonville in 20 mile and a mile per hour winds. She hit a oh my PR God. by 45 seconds. That's hard. Running in the wind is miserable can uh really Dumb. beat you down yeah it's awful yeah. greg out there again for cast member pantry is uh doing a 100 mile challenge week to raise funds for cast member pantry 
Gosh, I have never. I I know a lot of people who've done the hundred mile weeks, and yeah. I have no. I just I don't ever have any desire to go a hundred miles. Well, Good for you, that, Greg. Well, wait, yeah. that doesn't make any sense if you want to run a hundred miler. See, yes, I can. I I, <laughs> I the idea of running a hundred miler in one swoop is fine, but the idea of getting up every day and running a part of a hundred mm. miles after you've rested for a while sounds miserable. Mm. Well, today was day three, yeah. and he knocked he knocked it out again. So he's going strong. Yeah, fifteen miles each day. Go, Greg. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Just I hadn't done the math yet, and <laughs> it just awful. Oh, uh, uh, Matt's doing the uh, climb Everest challenge. He decided to challenge himself and make for public accountability. It's uh, April nineteenth through June seventh. Love that. It's going to bike, run, and hike 29,000 feet, a.k.a. the uh, height of Mount Everest. It benefits yeah. Feeding America. Get it, Frumpa. Uh, Jamie finished second in his age group last weekend and had a sub-30-minute 5K. That's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. He's coming for you. He is coming he for is. you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> if you didn't listen to the live episode, you got to go listen to the live episode because uh, Michael may have challenged him to a race. You'll have to go check it out. Uh, Jennifer Cook is staying on her work e- workout routine next week, even though she got her second. Is, oh, she gets her second vaccine this Wednesday. Yeah, be kind to yourself that second dose week. We had uh, we yeah. dealt with that last week. Actually, we had to adjust you, our training a bit. Yeah. Were you guys both getting side effects, or was it just Aaron, or just Aaron to a worse extent, or just Aaron complaining more? <laughs> no, I definitely had it to had the, it way worse. I had it way yeah. worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but I mean I read that uh men just don't get side effects quite as as badly as women. We're very macho. <laughs> Is that science? Yeah, that actually there was a New York Times article. <laughs> I think yeah, I had them very very mild, but I was sluggish for like a few days yeah, you were felt fatigued. like uh, Yeah. You know, maybe that's what this is to now. Good friend Jonesy loves beer, didn't drink whiskey when he got home. That was his, <laughs> that was goal. his goal, and he, oh. he accomplished it. I don't it. even know if Jonesy listens, but he commented. So. <laughs> I awesome. love it. That's a good goal. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. So. <laughs> and I know um, our friend Nicole, um, she's got some new goals because she just got a Peloton, and I know Ooh. that's not kind of on our list. So uh, she's going to introduce some. Um, I guess that's cross training into her running now. I guess a bike is, is cross training. Yeah, cross training. Yeah. I don't. I don't remember what Higgins said. Yeah, cross training. <laughs> <laughs> cross training is biking, hiking, anything cardio ish. Strength training is like the squats and like all that stuff. Hal Higgins. Yeah. Hal Higgins is and- a very smart man. <laughs> Isn't Higgins like Magnum PI? Yes. Yeah, yes. I don't- <laughs> Okay. Are right. Hal Higgins and Wally Crump friends? Uh, yeah. I, I, I think so. I can't. <laughs> Guys, we also got a fun shout out from our friend Pam. She uh, was part of Team Shenanigans, actually. And she has a blog called Wife Mother Runner. Uh, and she named us in her top five running favorite running podcasts. Oh. And she shouted us out. So Thank go you. check her out, too. I reacted to that like we won an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, back to back to I need people to validate me. <laughs> oh man. So uh who's coming up on the next runner studio? Chris. We've awesome. got Chris. That's uh games we grew up with, uh your friend. Yep, Mr. I love Chris. Yep. He made me laugh really, really hard. Yeah. Um, and yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah, so he's on our next one. If you guys want to be featured on one, just uh, let us know. Send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. Email us. We'll run for podcast at gmail.com. We love having you guys on and featuring you guys on those. Those are some of my – I love the inner runner studios, actually. They're my mm-hmm. favorites. We learned a lot about Vanessa. We did. Oh, she was, yeah, Vanessa is really good. She's awesome. All right, so what do we have coming up? Well, Saturday is our big day, right? Uh, What's the plan? The plan. Well, so I've decided that uh, I'm going to do most of my run before the actual live event. And then I'm going to run a 5K with everyone starting at 10 a.m. Uh, but I'm going to run walk it so that I can be live on Instagram with everybody and restory and cheer you guys on as you are going. Because uh, I realized that if I try and run like a half marathon or something 
that it would kind of take me away from the actual event of cheering everyone on. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to run, walk, and video and chat with you guys. Yeah, and just a reminder, uh, we will kick off at 10 a.m. Whatever distance you want to do, find your crew. The The goal, I think, is really to just connect socially and mm-hmm. and enjoy the enjoy the day and, you know, just blow it out on social media. We're yeah. very excited. But we also talked about the night before, Friday the 9th, um, we're going to jump on Instagram live and we'll have a like a little happy hour for everybody that's running. So you can join us in the chat. You can, you know, crack open a drink of your choice and just carb load with us. Yeah, carb load. Um, And then chocolate milk. (laughs) And then and then following the race um, around 2 p.m. on Saturday, we're going to all get back on Instagram live and uh, have a toast. Yeah, that's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Daylight time. Daylight time. Eastern Daylight Time. No one says that. No one knows what you're talking about. Well, you have – not everybody switches times at the same time. You have to remember that because the UK doesn't switch at the same time as we do. Just a nightmare. (laughs) Just a nightmare. Like – Just a nightmare. And like the whole US is like right where it should – like everyone who switched have switched by now. Like – And then 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So adjust your clocks for whatever that means to you. But yes, at 2 p.m., We'd like to cheers with you guys. Ha- crack open a beer, uh, eat your favorite post-run meal with us. Whatever you want to do, hold up your medallions. We'll take some pictures. So I actually for the the next episode cover, I'm gonna do a collage of everyone who sends me a picture of the so medallions. of of you with your medallion. Uh, so everyone, after you guys finish your races, send me pictures of your medallion. Send me pictures of your group. Send me just pictures. Love that. So do we want to get into our main topic? What's our main topic? Race reviews. Not race, race re- report. Race reports. <laughs> Not race reports. Race <laughs> reviews. Are we going to talk about how our training is going and other things coming up? So how is training going? We're following it. We uh, kind of. <laughs> I mean, last week, like I said, we well, adjusted vaccines, quite yeah. a bit for the vaccines because I, I mean, on Thursday, we thought that I was we'd be able to go out for at least a little something, and then I ended up on the couch and then in the bathroom uh, over a toilet because it just didn't go well. I had a really strong reaction. <laughs> oh my god! Which one did you get? Uh, uh, Pfizer, yeah. which oh, is the one no. they say is the a little bit milder reaction. Too. Yeah, I was like, isn't like isn't it the Moderna one that's supposed to be like? crazy yeah, yeah i just um i had a strong reaction so mm-hmm. i was down for the count it was short-lived it was only like 12-ish hours that i didn't feel great but uh it was everything you could possibly get <laughs> oh my god that's miserable so we adjusted last week what, we, what have we been doing we went up to the appalachian trail in new york we did a place called bear mountain oh yeah it was all that's stairs yeah um so we've gotten i don't know somewhere around two to three 3,500 feet of elevation the last three weekends. I twisted my ankle about five times in two weekends. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. So that was pretty good. Yeah, uh, that was great going into the race <laughs> that we're going to review. So my ankle is kind of sensitive. For uh, It's actually still pretty sore, like in, if I turn it the right way. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's you know, part of trail running, I guess. Yeah. I feel like ankles just... Like once you've twisted or like mess with like mess up your ankle, like it's never right again. Yeah. Well, I have that problem. Yesterday, my ankle was bothering me, and I think it's just that whole like that was my I sprained my ankle back in the last February, so mm-hmm. it's just never been the same. So, yep. Um, I don't know what else is going on with our training. We're ticking up the miles. We're ticking up the elevation. This week we are doing somewhere around forty five ish miles. So it's our highest. Uh, mileage in probably months. Yeah, a couple it's months. Been quite a while yeah. since we've we've been that high. Been no we, reason to. <laughs> um. So yeah, we're ticking up. The hard part is we're ticking up elevation at the same time we're ticking up miles, which I've never done before. So that's been tiring and kind of a challenge. Yeah, and like taking up your entire weekends probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, because yeah. we have to drive places to the, find hills and all that. The next so. five weeks are going to be a little rough before yeah. we tick down. This week was a little 
a little rough because <laughs> we did a, like a seven miler, an 11 miler, a seven miler. So weekday long runs are just it, that it it's tiring. So I do think so, that the next five to six weeks will be a, a little bit of a challenge. So mm-hmm. what will you work up to? Like what's the, I, I think our plan is to hit about 70. Our yeah. peak week I think is 70. 70 in a week. Yeah. Yeah. With hopefully about okay. five or 6,000 feet of climbing. But the, our plan isn't to do for the 5,000 feet of elevation during that peak week. Our plan is that one of their lower, like, so there's a peak week of like 60 something and then a, 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 a down week during that down week, we'll go higher in elevation when we, the next week we'll drop elevation and go longer. With all of this, we actually signed up our return ticket to uh, Rock in the Knob. <laughs> <laughs> Which was, in your words, the hardest thing you've ever done. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We should, it, we should, it should go much, much, much better this yeah. time. I mean, we're I, far more prepared. We'd like, like to see what kind if of If it was so miserable, like why? Like what? You just well, want to like, like, begin and feel it's, better? It's it was hard. 66. It was, yeah. They actually added, it's funny because I read the description and he added in an extra hill. So there's another 600 feet of elevation that he added. So it's 6,600 feet and 26 miles. I mean, it's it's a rough one, but I feel like we've done so much elevation training this year. It'd be nice to go back there and just see what the difference is. Which one of our listeners is doing that? Uh, Baltimore. Baltimore on? Yeah. Baltimore yeah. On, yeah. So we have that. We have Calbone in end of May, our rim to rim thing, and uh, Space Coast. That's our stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we also signed up for Beast Pacing. Oh, if you're around the Rehoboth, oh, Maryland, yeah. uh, Maryland, Delaware, Rehoboth, New it, Jersey. If you're within driving distance of Rehoboth, uh, we signed up for Beast Pacing, which is Vanessa, uh, their Tower Beach Run. On September 11th, and it is literally on the beach. She actually announced it on our show. That was the first time she's ever talked about it. Uh, and then that same day that the episode came out, she she released the actual race. Uh, so I haven't it. committed. And the reason I haven't committed is I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds really fun. And then she's like, it's <laughs> on the beach. And I was like, in the sand? Yeah, so Mike Wardian um, lives. I, if you guys don't know who Mike Wardian is, he's an, an elite like marathoner slash ultra All runner. Kinds of general. Um, runner, so yeah. similar to myself, he, yeah. he lives in. Well, sorry, <laughs> he has a house in Dewey Beach that he posts all over his Instagram. So it's no secret. But he's on the beach with his dogs because I actually follow his dogs, Rosie and Bash, and. So how I know, so I've been watching the videos of the dogs playing on the beach, and it's actually pretty solid sand. What's the shortest distance I can do? A 5K. 5K. Maybe we do that. I mean, it's, we signed it's, up for the 10K. We're only doing the we're 10K. We're not even doing yeah. the, we're, we're doing we, we're not even you doing climb the mountains. Yeah, but. <laughs> I climb. I don't sand. even know. I can't even think of a joke right now. <laughs> Sand I'm is my, so offended by the idea of running on the listen, sand. Sand is my nightmare. Mm. I during the uh, Batona race because we live in the Pinelands, South Jersey, where everything is sugar sand. I literally was cursing like <laughs> "fu sand," screaming in the middle of the woods, cursing at the sand. I am not a fan of the sand, but I'm going to do, do this. Else hate sand. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> you know who else hates sand? Anakin Skywalker. Oh. Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what is happening? I don't know. I don't know. All right. All right. So. Oh, God. Um, so, you guys have been running your asses off and then uh, running yep. up mountains. Yeah. But so, beach, <laughs> beach running. Tom, 5K. You guys can do it. I mean, I'll probably sign up for the 10K. How? What? How does one train for this? Like, do I have to go right on the beach? No. No. Where's the beach? You could just go to the beach and run on it. I mean, honestly, (laughs) I think it's just the only thing you would have to train for is your calves. Like, your your calves can get a little sore from – so, like, do some calf raises or something like that. That's all. Like like calves meaning baby cows? Yes. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So that's fine. I, I did see a documentary one time about beach running and which was weird because it was all about lifeguards. Um, <laughs> but like, 
in like the 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 beginning montage, there's like slow motion beach running. <laughs> um, I forget what it's called. It's that, really big. It's really big in Europe. Big <laughs> is there big a in guy Germany. named uh, David Hasselhoff who uh, is the Doctor the... David Hasselhoff? <laughs> it, maybe. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, but I do, I do love Vanessa, so I might have to do it just because I enjoy her so much. Yeah. Also, it's in Rehoboth. Yeah. And I like Rehoboth. I know. Do we, do we, well, technically it's in Dewey Beach. Okay. So So can we go to, um, can we go to Starboard and get, oh, we can go to Dogfish Heads, but can we go to Starboard and do those like, although it is COVID time, so I don't know if they'll have it, but they have an amazing, like make your own Bloody Mary bar. Oh, uh, wow. Like all kinds of goodness in it. The Dewey, um, why am I blanking on the second word? The Dewey Brewery. It's not Dewey Brewery. It's Dewey Beer Company. Dewey Dewey, Beer Company. Dewey, yeah, Dewey, Dewey, Dewey Beer, yeah. Beer Company um, is like right down the street from the start too. Mm. Oh, I like wow. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. See, 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 there's reasons. There's reasons. There's reasons. <laughs> so how you how's your training going, guys? Uh, really good, actually. I've been I feel like sticking to a plan, and um, I've I've been feeling a little bit discouraged because I feel like I've been working out more, and I haven't been like dieting, dieting, but I've been watching what I've been eating, but I haven't been losing any weight, but I'm feeling a hell of a lot better. I think so. I'll take that as a win. Um. And then one of the things I'm doing this month uh, for April, it's Marathon Munch at Orange Month. I said Munch, I think. (laughs) I'm hungry. Uh, Marathon Month at Orange Theory. So in all the classes throughout the month, you have to get uh, 26.2 miles, Um, which means it's a ton of classes because I only get, I don't know, in between a mile and a mile and a half every class. Like I'm not running like two or three miles because it's all interval based. And then a lot of times you're doing hills. So I'm going to have to go a lot. And you could have done a half, a marathon or an ultra. Um, And I forget what they said their their official ultra distance was. But um, so I did that. So that'll encourage me to go. And then even like today when I went to class, I think I ran a little bit faster just so get, I could get like a yeah. tiny bit more distance towards that. So I think that'll be pretty motivating to me, but I've been keeping up my long runs ever since we did our half a couple of weeks ago, not trying to get down to three miles again on the weekend. Like I'm going to try and run at least six on the weekends going forward. So we'll see if I can keep up with that just so I can maintain some of that. And then when, Oh, something is coming up, it's not going to be miserable to start from scratch and train again. Yeah. I heard your Frederick's uh, half marathon got moved to a time when you're going to die. Oh God. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to die. We're going to die. Also, that's the race that when I did it last time was probably the worst I ever felt during a half marathon. So I'm not looking forward to this. That's Uh, I mean, July, right? July, July 10th and 11th. It's oh, it's July 11th, but um, our friends at Running on Tapped are also registered oh, for this yay. one. Yeah. So ho- hopefully we can meet up with them when we go out there, and it's postponed. So hopefully they have it in person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so, think yeah by July. I think that's the the goal. Yeah, I saw the post that they posted, and they seemed like it was the, that was the whole reason why they were doing it was because they were while they may felt a little too soon, they felt like July was was a for sure thing that they could make it work. And I mean, I guess before that in June, we have the Baltimore 10 miler, which is supposed to still go on. That's part of the, the challenge thingy that you're doing. King King crab challenge. Yeah. So you'll see uh, running on tap there too. Yeah. Cause they're doing, that's the whole thing that they're doing is the King crab challenge, right? Yeah. Cause it's Frederick, the 10 miler and then the Baltimore half. Mm. Okay. Okay. That ten miler is the worth ten mile. By the way, it's it's, it's in June every year, it's so hilly. it's always like stupid hot. Yeah, and you start at the zoo, which is at the top of a giant ass hill. You run down the hill, around a lake, and then back, back up, up the, hill the hill to the zoo at the end. <laughs> like when when yeah, you have you, to run, you have at run the end. back up the hill yeah. to the zoo. Yeah. Oh my That's god! That's the worst when <laughs> the, when races end with the hill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and it's true. always on my birthday, and I've avoided it like the plague. Oh yeah, you've never done it. I've done it like five times, but. We're I'm doing supportive. It this year. Yeah. We're doing it this year. <laughs> How's your Very training? Very supportive. 
How's your training going, Tom? You still, I saw something about 200 pounds today, 200 pound dead, dead lift. Dead in weight, the, in dead the something. grand scheme of things, that's not that much weight. It's not. When you, when you compare my body weight to that weight, it's not that much. Really? It, it sure seems heavy. <laughs> um, and, and I did it really well what and did- I was, I was very happy, but, Yay. um, yeah, I'm still doing three days a week. I'm still doing, um, this strength training, which is a combination of squats, bench, overhead presses, um, deadlifts. I always throw in some curls in there. Um, and it's just, you know, I have not missed a day and I started this, you know, a month and a half, two months ago. He's going to look like a little snack. A little snack. <laughs> and um, it's really helped you a lot, I hear, in your running. It has. It has. I mean, the whole goal was to strengthen my core and my and my non-existent butt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I feel like, you know, because usually when I'm running, the first thing that'll fatigue real quick are my, my legs, hips, and lower back. Yeah. And, and I don't feel that anymore. Well, like, that's awesome. Good. So that's good. You know, it's good when, when you do something consistent, consistently, and it actually feels different, you know, when, when tested. So you mean yeah. strength training and cross training actually works with running? Shocking. They, act, wow. they actually make you feel better. What? Who knew? <laughs> what a weird concept. Strange. Did we, did we just discover this? <laughs> like, are we the first people? Like, <laughs> I'm going to title this. You should cross train. Oh, good. <laughs> And strength train. And strength train. According to Halligans. <laughs> According to Halligans. I can't even call him Higdon anymore. Like, it will not come out of my oh mouth. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, I don't guys. know. I don't know his real name. So, <laughs> whatever you guys. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. This is all my fault. Oh. Well, Tom, why don't yeah. you tell us how good that strength training has been for you while you tell us all about your lovely experience at shamrock oh yeah so buckle up (laughs) buckle Uh, up (laughs) buckle up because for some context shamrock is um a marathon half marathon weekend in virginia beach it's always on saint patrick's day weekend um we've done it the last five years tom talks about it a lot on the I show. Like, a lot. A lot. <laughs> like a lot a lot and the reason why i talk about it a lot is it was the first real big event outside of disney that solidified my love of this whole running thing that makes because sense. Of the whole yeah. because of the whole community and all the fanfare about it it's in march so the weather is always ridiculous <laughs> and very unpredictable uh we were registered for last year and obviously that didn't happen. So we ran it this year and we decided to go down and run it in person because they were going to, ha- they were putting on a live event, although they did not, um, they could not like close the course. So it was completely choose your own adventure. Um, whatever distance you were signed up for, you could run it Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, starting at like 7 a.m. They had uh, a start line. And yeah, so we would see runners the entire weekend. We went down with our friends, Chris and Lisa. I actually, for the first time, got us a good hotel, which was near the, near the start line. I'm notorious for getting us hotels that are really, really away. And being convinced that he booked the one right next to the start line. Like I remember that last year. (laughs) Yeah. Two years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Two years ago. Sorry. Two years ago. I remember that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, we did. We were signed up for the uh, Dolphin Challenge, which is the 8K and the half marathon. Um, we did the 8K on Friday. We did the half on Saturday. Um, we didn't have. We didn't. We decided to not get up too early to do either of them. Um, well, yeah, and I worked on Friday, yeah. so it was. Re- it was actually really nice uh, because we didn't have to do the half on Sunday, which is always kind of miserable. Cause like you do the half and then you drive home oh, yeah, right? Yeah, if true. you have to work on yeah. Monday. So it was really nice. And I actually worked for most of the day on Friday. And then when we logged off, we just, you know, when I logged off. We just went for the, the AK run. Um, the other thing that was crazy about that weekend was it was the windiest I have ever <laughs> experienced. Like I've never run, um, a race that was so windy. Like there were points where 
especially during that AK, where I would step and it would almost feel like I was stepping on something oh because God. it was so windy. Like yeah. I felt like I was gonna like fall over. Yeah. Like you start at 30th Street and for both the half and the 8K, you go south. And so the wind's at your back. So for like the first mile, you're flying because the wind is <laughs> propelling you forward. Yeah, you're like, we're this going is great. So cool. Amazing. But but you know you're gonna turn around and come right back up. And so yeah, it was very, very windy. Um, but just a little shout out to Chris and Lisa. First Lisa. Lisa set the pace for the entire weekend. <laughs> we were doing intervals and we decided to do 30 30s. So, you know, 30 second walk, 30 second run. And, and Lisa was on a mission. So she was kind of our, our pacer, um, which led us all to fairly decent times in both the 8K and the half. Did Lisa get a PR? Yes. <laughs> okay. Lisa got a PR and so did I. Thank you. Thank like, you. My gosh. I've been waiting for you to I'm, say it for like five minutes. <laughs> I'm like, where are we? Really? <laughs> yes, we both PR'd. Um, oh, gosh. If, if we hadn't been doing those intervals at, at the pace that she was setting, like, I wouldn't have PR'd. Um, yeah, she was feeling herself. She really like, was. She's doing good. And I know she's, um, she's lost a bunch of weight this year and she's been working really hard. So she said this is the best she's felt in like a couple of years. So that's awesome. Uh, I'm super, super proud of her. She did amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm super, super proud of Tom. I think all that strength training, all that swimming, all that hard work that you're putting in. I mean, that's, that really means something. Oh yeah. 100%. And this just shows you that apparently Hal Higgins is right. Hal Higgins is right. <laughs> well, and it was funny because um, Tom got in another one of his running funks that happens. Uh, I love I, cranky. I don't believe that this happens, actually. Oh, my God. It was so bad. <laughs> and it happened early. It happened at like mile three. Oh, gosh. So we kind of like he was, I don't know, a few yards behind us for the majority of the race. And we got to a point where Chris, Lisa, and I start talking and we're like, you know, if he does X pace for this many more miles, he's going to PR and he's probably going to PR by a lot. Oh. And then we were like, well, who's going to tell him because <laughs> it could go either way. Right. It could be totally discouraging and it shuts him down and he doesn't want to talk anymore. Or that could motivate him to, Hey, speed up and maybe catch up with some of us. Um, so we sent Chris. <laughs> not me and how to Chris. And, and well i mean honestly sometimes your loved one is not the one to be no, the one that no, motivates no, no, no. you it's just the way that it is because sometimes because you can be meaner to your loved one and they'll still love you <laughs> well, and i will say chris paced me for the last two ish miles which got me over a mental hump okay and then and then when i realized how the math was shaking out i was all about it I yeah. was in it to win it. Yeah. And yeah. and so, you know, I mean, Chris is fast. He could have absolutely just kept going and dusted all of us. But he was definitely there to help us all. Yeah. Because because after he got me over my hump, he went back up and made sure that Lisa was OK. And so, yeah, it was it was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, honestly, people who um, I know that there's always people who are like, oh, I'm afraid to run with so and so because they're so fast. And, you know, even though that they said they'd stay with me or they'd pace me like I don't like I, I just I feel like there's some people out there like, and Chris is a great example of that. Like when they want to help you, I mean, they're in it to win it f for you and with you. And, and so that's awesome that he was able to do that for you guys. Yeah, that was great. And um, I felt really good as well. I didn't PR. I kind of stayed with the group. Uh, but for the last mile, I was actually feeling really, really good. And my fastest mile of the whole half marathon was the last mile. That's awesome, too. That's so yeah. awesome. Yeah, that so is that awesome. Really and I didn't feel like bad. I wasn't feeling sore. I felt like great afterwards. That's yeah, really I made sure good. I stretched. Oh my God, I actually stretched afterwards. So. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I felt, I felt fantastic. And I think we were going like kind of like a good enough pace that felt like a little bit of a push. Like it felt like I was working, but I wasn't like dying. So I think I was able to really push myself at the end. I have, so that was exciting. I have a question just 
overall about the race experience and how Jane A, who uh, we're going to shout out a few times, how Jane A, who we we love, I mean, we've done um, what Shamrock between the the four of us. Uh, I done it a few times, to- few times, four, four times. You've done it five times. I mean, we, we're clearly fans of JNA. They do it right. Yeah. Their after parties are are amazing. Their swag is unbeatable. I mean, everything about JNA, we love them. How in these times was everything? How did they uh, handle everything? They they freaking killed it. So they had the expo open. I guess. I don't, we weren't there Thursday, but it was open Friday. It was open Saturday and it was open Sunday. Very, very small. They had a couple of vendors, but they had their normal like store set up and they in, in that main Hilton hotel. And then outside the hotel, they had a start line. It's normally at the convention center, right? So they moved it to, they, yep. They moved it. So they moved it to the Hilton. Um, and then right outside that hotel was where the start line was. And okay. everyone in the building, whether they were working at the expo or the little shop, um, was just so excited. They kept saying, thank you for coming. We're so happy to have you back, which was great. And then at that start line, there were always at least three or four people from JNA at that start line and that finish line, cheering people on, getting people started, giving people high fives. They were there when you finished um, during yeah. kind of those set hours. And we were always there. So there was always someone there. And if we wanted them to count us down, they would count us down. They were able to take pictures of us. That's awesome. Um, it was fantastic. And they the, were so great. The race announcer, the one that's at the end, that's usually at the end, was he there the whole weekend? Yeah, he the was leprechaun. there. And- Yep, he was dressed like a little leprechaun, like all three days. Okay, he was rocking his leprechaun outfit. It was fantastic. And did they have any any kind of after after stuff, or was it just literally here's your stuff and keep on moving? So, so you got your stuff before the race. So okay. like they didn't give you a medal or anything when you finished, but when you picked up your stuff at the expo, uh, they had just as much swag as they normally do. So what did we get Tom? We got our medals. We got a blanket this year. It was a blanket instead of a towel. We got shirts, mm-hmm. right? We got koozies. Okay. We got, we got the hat that oh, we always hat. do. Okay. okay. Yeah. And we, and we got a, a mask. Oh, oh and we got okay. a mask this year. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so tons and tons of swag. So that was awesome. Um, and you got that before you started. And it was so great, just like Tom was saying, like anytime you looked out your window, there was somebody running something. Oh, that's cool. And I think people really like the freedom of being able to do like what race they wanted on what day. Like yeah. some people did like the marathon on Friday and then did the 8K on Saturday or whatever they were doing. Like there were just you Anytime you saw people, they were all in different bibs. So it was pretty cool to see. Did they have uh, people on course cheering or anything on course at all? So the course was mapped out. um, So there were signs everywhere and they had it all color coded. So the 8K was one color, half was another. So that was good. Um, For the half at kind of the... I don't know, Tom, what would you say? That was like mile nine ish or something. Yeah. Um, they had an aid station Mm -hmm. set up, but that was the one thing where they had full bottles of water, um, that you opened yourself. And then they had kind of like you guys were saying, like pre-wrapped snacks. They had like granola bars and stuff like that. Um, no, not like a goo station or anything like that, but it was, it was granola bars. What, I don't know what else was there. Fruit snacks, maybe that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was good. Um, There weren't as many locals out, but because the whole city was filled with runners, everyone was just like cheering you on. Like, because if they weren't running their race, they were walking around. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, we tried to do the same. So like when we'd see runners, we would, you know, kind of stop what we were doing and cheer for them. Yeah. And I think what really compelled us to go down and do this, even though the course wasn't closed and it wasn't going to be the exact same experience. Is just the port something that we've enjoyed the last couple of years? Yeah. Um, because I took some notes. Um, this is going to be real nerdy, but I compared 2019 to 2000 to 2021. And 2019 was when we all fun ran Shamrock. Um, Michael, you hauled butt and then brought us beer. So that was that year. So I compared the two. 
when um, when J and A had to cancel last year and push to this year, they got a lot of negative comments on Facebook. Like it Just, was their fault. <laughs> like it was their fault. Like they and and they're a small business, right? Yeah. And so I was like, okay, so let's compare numbers. In 2019, the 8K had 7,774 runners. This year, it had 915, which is an 89% decrease. Yeah. yeah. Now, there are people that ran it virtually, but this is the people actually on the course. The half in 2019 had 5,853 runners. This year, it had 1,077, 72% drop. And then the full in 2019 had 1,739. This year, 376 full marathon runners. Wow. 79% drop. So just the impact to their business was huge. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, that's really what compelled us to go down is because we want this to happen next year. And and next year is the 50th. And I know we already have a huge contingency of folks going down. So I'm very excited to see what happens next year. Which speaking of, I was going to bring that up and that's a perfect uh, way right into that. Uh, All four of us are signed up for the half marathon next year. Well, Tom, Diana, and I are all in for the dolphin challenge. So we're doing the 8K and the half marathon and Michael is doing just the half marathon. And um, I think... All together, we've got like 20-ish friends coming down with us between the old school team shenanigans team, uh, the Run Ohana guys, uh, our friends from We'll Run For. Guys, we're really excited. If you guys want to come for a really fun runcation, Shamrock 50th is where it's at. Is that trademarked by Run Eat Drink? A runcation? Yeah. I don't know. I've been calling it runcation for, yeah, for years. five, six, seven years. However, they are the runcation nation. That's so true. I mean, I don't <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to ask them. Guys, is that trademarked? Um yeah. I even actually talked to uh, Amy and told her that uh, her and Dana and they yeah. should get some people from their That would be their a, runca- it's cation a good nation. destination trip because if they can have a good post party, it's just yeah, an amazing, that post it's an amazing is, event they put on. Yeah, really. they're yeah. they're great at what they do. And yeah. and I really like Tom said, with especially with the percentage drop that they had this year, I want to see them come back strong. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So we're very yeah. excited. Everyone go sign up. Do it. And hit last pause, thing I'll, sign up. <laughs> last thing I'll say about Shamrock, um our, our friend Chris that we mentioned, he signed up for the full marathon. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We were talking about yeah. that. Because his first full was at Shamrock, I believe. Yeah. So. And he, I, I don't even know if, uh, maybe I shouldn't say this. I don't know. He was talking about a PR when we were talking to him. He was on uh, Michael's other podcast. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. From his, the games we grew up with was on uh, his Skyrim podcast. So we were talking about it with him and he was thinking about doing a PR. And I, for like a hot second, thought about joining him and uh, going for the sub four with him. But then I thought that's dumb, and I uh, decided to go have fun, have on, fun, the, fun on the show, on the half marathon course. It's really hard. <laughs> like there are certain things, like I don't know. Like I feel like when other people are running it for fun, yeah, it's really hard not to run it for fun. It's different when you go to a race with a bunch of people and everyone's like running for time or running for you know taking it a little bit more seriously but i think that in the past and i actually had this long conversation with our friend Susanna. um i think in the past because Susanna was one who would always go and do her own thing and run the marathon uh while because she had a big goal of running 40 marathons for her 40th um and i think that something that has come out of the whole pandemic for me is that i don't ever want to take the runcations for granted and the amount of time you spend with your friends Mm -hmm. ever again, uh, because you never know, like who knows, like tomorrow isn't promised and you know, this could happen again. Who knows? And I like, while we can, I want to have as much fun as we can with the people that we love. Yeah. I agree with that. 100 so i thought about it for a hot second and then and Susanna actually because we were having this conversation signed up for the half marathon too so she'll be there oh yeah yeah i'm just thinking i don't think i've ever fun run with Susanna. yeah so, so it was the yay. same because that was the conversation we we're having like we just don't want to take that for granted so why would we go do the marathon when all of our friends are fun running on the half marathon course that's dumb 
<laughs> yeah. Like do do a sub four hour some other time. Yeah. There's so many other races that you can do for yourself. So Yeah. So take advantage of it. But yeah, overall Shamrock was a really great weekend. Um I I'm glad we went. I was really resistant and even like the day before I was like trying to talk us out of like not driving down there because I hate that drive and I'm really cranky. <laughs> um, and it was it worked. I mean, I was super cranky when we got there and then super <laughs> cranky when we got home. Um, but I'm glad like when we were there and there were rudders everywhere, I was like, OK, this is why we do this. Like yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Is, I was like, this is fun. Any final thoughts, Tom, before we hear about their race? No, I think we're good. Yeah, Tell awesome. us about the Big Woods half marathon. Half marathon. Yeah. Yeah. Michael um, twisted his ankle five times before we were doing the race. Yeah. So my ankle was pretty tender going into the race. He's like buying tape the night before, (laughs) trying to tape it up, like trying to figure out if like that's helpful in any way. I'm like, this is not a great time to be trying to figure this out. You're going to be miserable. Like if you wear that tape. I did wrap it the night before and tried running with it wrapped and it like did not feel fantastic that way. So yeah. I uh, I went commando on my <laughs> ankle and ran with uh, no tape or support of any kind. But um, yeah, no, it was a pretty pretty technical in places course. So I was going in. Um, I wanted to kind of go at it pretty hard, but I was like, uh, the first time I twist my ankle, I'm gonna probably not go at it that hard after that, <laughs> and that didn't take very long, but. Uh, let's see. How did it start out? We, it was in a park where we did the, uh, labor pains, labor pains race, which I, it really only covered maybe a quarter mile of the same course because the park's so big that, um, the loop that we did around the lake at labor pains, we ran maybe a quarter mile of the same course. And that was, yeah, it. that was probably about it. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Same parking lot, uh, same basic setup. Yeah, same start line, yeah. same everything. Yeah. Mm. Um, you start out just like a, like a, every 10 seconds, she was letting about five people off, just yeah. random as you walked up there. Um, it started out on kind of like a gravel path before it went into the, uh, before it went into the woods. As we have cats climbing across us here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watching them. <laughs> And then uh, it started going uphill pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, it was um, probably about a half a mile before the first big steep Climb, uphill was. Yeah. And so this wasn't like rolling hills. It was climb, climb, climb for a mile, descend, descend, descend for a mile, climb, climb, climb. For... <laughs> there was oh, in, wow. in between straight for – there was some – like, There was some runnable you got, areas. So you yeah. got up to like the, the top – and then you were able to run um, at the top for maybe like a mile or so. And then you would go down and then you would climb again. So, But the climbs were all long and big. They weren't yeah. like rolling in any way where it was like, a, like you know, a tenth of a mile up, a little bit down, a little bit up. A little, it was just like straight up, sh- then flat, then straight down. <laughs> like there was – it was a lot of straight ups and straight downs. Yeah. I was having a little issue in the beginning. I had to stop at like mile two and tie both my shoes. They were too loose. So I didn't feel super stable. And with the ankle, I was like, eh. oh, yeah. And I was like, it. and anytime you went downhill, it was always like a lot of leaves and loose rocks and mud. It was very technical. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the, anything that was up and down was very rocky. There was no, um, it was very loose. Like it was just, it was just, it was very technical course. Yeah. So, yeah, but, like, I, I went ahead. I wasn't that far ahead of you, really, because by the time I stopped and tied my shoes and all, you had kind of, you weren't that far behind me. I, I have think. no yeah. idea. I'd say by around mile seven is probably the first time I saw you. Yeah. He was at the top of a hill, and I was at the bottom of the hill, but it was like a switchback type situation, so I could see him, but he was still probably a good half mile maybe more ahead of me like Uphill, that's how yeah. far um distance you could see at that point and then his bl- his he was wearing a blue shirt his blue shirt would disappear for a while until we got to another situation where he was either all the way down the hill and i could see him because i was at the top of the hill um but he so he was a- ahead of me by quite a bit um until the very end when yeah why well, i had started to- yeah to-, I- to hike a little bit more because your ankle yeah i started hiking around mile seven um, 
like almost exclusively, okay. except for a little trotting here and there. But yeah, um, yeah, because at mile like eight, there's this big eight or nine. There's a big big no- climb. Yeah, it was about mile eight and a half. There was a huge climb, and then to come down it, it was a trail that wasn't a trail. Yeah, I was what like, I keep calling it. Well, as I, I was pretty much alone, and I'm, as I'm going off, I'm like, oh, this is, I'm like, oh, I can't wait for the downhill. And then I got to the downhill, and it was flags in the middle of the woods in deep leaves. <laughs> Like, I couldn't even, there was no trail to follow. You there had to follow the flags. No yeah. trail. Like, it's a trail that wasn't a trail. She literally just set out, like, you know those flags the that are in the ground that they do markouts with? Or, like, when you, like, have sprinkler systems, they stick the little flags in the ground. It was just these little pink flags that kind of guided you through leaves and rocks and you were supposed oh to try God. and figure out that that if you were on the trail and then there were fl- little pink flags hanging from the trees and you were like maybe i'm on the trail maybe i'm not i have That's no so idea weird. there was a guy who had who had uh, hurt his ankle pretty good when i was going through there and uh he was being helped back but so i got through that like and i had nobody in front of me or anything so i had to like i couldn't just look down and watch my steps or anything I had to keep watching where I was going. So it was a little tedious going through there. But uh, once I got through that, I, I was able to run a little bit again. But I, with my with my ankle, I just I couldn't really ever do anything. Because I turned it twice that day. And then I turned my other ankle when I was going through the deep leaves. Tom's shaking his head. So, yeah. the uh, My left ankle was not in great shape at that point. So I just wanted to be safe and just um, power hiked pretty much to the end. And then you guys saw me. Well, so for me, I started, um, I mean, he kind of took off. So the very beginning of the race was actually a a little bit on pavement. So he kind of took off on the pavement to get ahead. Uh, The good part about having like, and I think, and I kind of almost hope that forever they do this on the trails. They had it where, like he said, there was like 10 people every 10 to 15 seconds, the horn would go off. And so it kind of spread people out. And so when it went into the single track stuff, like pretty quickly, there wasn't a huge clog the way that sometimes there is uh, in trail races. Um, So he had gone ahead pretty quickly and I was Mm. by myself kind of running up the the big first climb. I, I got as far as I could and then. Uh, since we've been practicing the power hiking, I actually was able to get up that hill a little faster than uh, I thought I would be able to. And I passed a whole bunch of people. I don't know, coming down, I think around mile two, a girl, Megan from the Pineland Striders uh, here in South Jersey, uh, she's one of our listeners that we've talked about in the past. She caught up with me um, and I heard her voice. She was like, uh, <laughs> that she was coming behind me and I looked and we saw each other and we're, I was like, Oh my gosh, Megan. So we ended up running probably about five, six miles together. Oh, um, yay. In that That's span. fun. Um, it was her first, I mean, I, let me just shout her out because I mean, she, she's never, this was her first real trail race. Oh, and get it, this girl. is what she chose to do. Yeah, it was a hard one. Part yeah. of the way through, I'm like, do you cross train? <laughs> it like remind me. Strength train. Remind me again how how long how long was it? A half marathon. A half marathon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I know you said that, but I, I lost it. Yeah. Already. So I was like, do you cross train and strength train? Because I'm like, my God, this girl is like going up these hills like they're nothing. So she she did amazing. She stayed with me most of the time. Um, and then there was a couple up. There was some bigger uphills that happened, and I think I lost her there. She was better at the downhills than I was, but. Um, when we were going up, we ended up in a little pack of like five or six women who were talking with each other. And so I was just trying to get up the hill. Um, Michael's vaccine appointment was actually oh, yeah. uh, right, appointment after. right after. Grace. So we were yeah. kind of in a little bit of a rush. We needed to be done within three, like three hours to three fifteen. So I was under like pressure to be done. So I like she started talking to some people. So I like just kept power hiking up the hill and i was like are you okay she's like yeah i'm good um i'll catch you if i can (laughs) so i just kept power hiking up the hill uh so i lost her for a little bit so i came down that section that he was talking about by myself i got lucky in that section because i had two people who were just close enough and just far enough 
in front of me that I could kind of see what they were doing. So I could kind of figure out where they were going. And they were funny because it was, I guess, I think it was a couple and they were fighting (laughs) because the guy was getting annoyed that the girl couldn't figure it out. And she was like climbing over these rocks and these trees and these branches. And he's like yelling at her, come on, let's go. And I was laughing at them the whole time because I'm like, this a couple is so annoyed with each other right now. <laughs> I love it. I don't understand how, like, you guys probably, I don't know. I was going to say, you guys probably fight more on this show than you do on the trails. Like, you guys seem pretty okay when you're, like, running together. But yeah. I, Tom and I would kill each other. It depends. It would um, be a bit- Well, so this, this couple that we came across, or, they, or that I came across, they, I mean, like, the guy was so annoyed with her she, yeah. like the whole time like come on and I, I, I just hear her scream then just leave me <laughs> i was just laughing i, I, I feel that i feel oh, that a lot. Man. i was just laughing but at least they were together enough that they guided me through the hard part of the trail <laughs> and entertained me while i was trying to get through my suffering after that there was the section where there was actually a whole bunch of people that got lost Oh, yeah, that's right. I oh, came God. across somebody who got lost. Too. Yeah, there was. Um, if you're looking down, it was easy to miss the turn. There was a, a left turn that you were supposed to make, yeah. and a lot of people missed it. The worst part about if you missed it was that it was a straight downhill. So, what, by the time they realized you had to turn they, around, and come they had back to up. Come, turn around, and they had to come straight back up. And it was uh, like a pretty big hill. So, I felt really bad for those yeah, people. Yeah, that stinks. Yeah. Um, and I actually almost started missing it, and then I saw someone coming at me. I was like, something's wrong here. So I turned around, and I saw the pink flag. I was like, oh, I was supposed to make that turn. So I actually got lucky, and I did not uh, miss that turn. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Um, I think that was probably like mile 10, and then... Yeah, then as we came out of the woods at the end, back I'm, on to like I, the gravel path. Yeah, I yeah. saw you like right... like There was like a quarter mile left, and that's when yeah. I saw him in front of me and i yelled at him to go get it yeah and i was like and then he stops i'm like i literally (laughs) just said go get it and go get what what am i going to get like the finish yeah what's the difference if i finish like another minute or like i don't know so then he stopped and he waited for me it's called chivalry aaron (laughs) (laughs) yeah so then we and we crossed together so yeah, nice. we finished Aww, with Megan. Love that. Yeah. yeah, with Megan had caught up to me by then. Which yeah, actually awesome. I'm glad Megan did because I was probably that was probably about the time I was in my head like, well, I so I was on on pace for a sub three hour until the trail that it's not a trail. And because uh, I was doing like sub fourteen. Bit, yeah. yeah, I was doing sub fourteens pretty pretty consistently through the whole thing. And then I hit that section and I was doing seventeens to eighteens. And I knew for that two miles, and I knew that that six minutes put me over. So then at that point, you're like, well, if I'm not going to make a sub three, then what's like, does it really matter? So, because that was sort of in my head as a goal. So then I started walking a lot more, which yeah. is, is so like in your head. Like you, like, yeah. you know, like you just get in your head and you're like, well, mm-hmm. whatever. And then you kind of give up and you shouldn't, but you yeah. do. But you <laughs> yeah. do. Yep. Yeah, yep, we've so, all been there. Yeah, so I was walking quite a bit. So Megan caught up with me at that point. So I'm glad she did because if she hadn't, I probably would have walked a little bit more than I did and finished a little slower. But when she found me, she was still kind of trotting. So I started trotting again. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't get to hang out. There was some no, really great swag. Yeah. Um, I think I showed videos. We got a t-shirt. We got the tumbler. Um, tumbler. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. We got the hat. Uh, so they gave out really good swag too, and um, yeah, I wish we could have hung out a little bit more. I, you know, the truck community is so much fun. Uh, I would have liked to have helped a little bit at the end when they needed some extra help with some volunteers and stuff. But I we had the rushed out to get yeah. yeah the vaccine appointment and uh, yeah. <laughs> but it was a good fun race. Yeah, it was challenging. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome, guys! Congratulations. Yeah, and we love Vanessa, so we love doing whatever we can to support her races. So yeah, that was a good. That was a fun one. So guys, um, I think we're doing something a little unusual this week for our something good. Although, anybody have anything else to say about their their races? No, I don't think final, so. Final race report. I'm 
pretty excited about our uh, our something good. Yeah. About what's about to happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ever this, done before? This was Never a Michael happened. suggestion oh, the other so day. Good, Michael. <laughs> Do you want to kick it off, Michael? <laughs> so uh, last weekend, we popped on Netflix and we're looking for something cheesy. And uh, there was good old Kristen Davis with a new film. Uh, probably going to be in the Criterion Collection someday <laughs> soon. Uh, called uh, Deadly Illusions. Oh, the gosh. first thing I need to say about Deadly Illusions was I had never heard of it until you guys mentioned it. And then the second <laughs> is every time Tom talks about Kristen Davis, she's got a different name. <laughs> Like you call, you keep calling her like Kristen Scott Thomas. Like you call her like all these different names, and I'm like, who are you talking about? It'll just randomly say it. And I think he's talking about a person. Oh my god! Because oh it's gosh. been on our minds, and we've been talking about it for a week. Oh it was insane. It was like one of those things where I had no idea what it was. He he's like, let's watch this this movie. I'm like, what is it? He's like, I don't know. I was like, okay, let me just tell you. Um, Buzz, when you Google it real quick, it says De- next Netflix's Deadly Illusions is total trash. <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. And honestly, guys, we're gonna talk spoilers because yeah, yeah, the spoilers yeah. are so ridiculous. So if you actually care, yeah, um, we're gonna turn into yeah. a media podcast and tell you to to either fast forward or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what people do. Slate um, Slate says that it's a bizarre erotic thriller. <laughs> it was bizarre. <laughs> It was kind of erotic. Yeah, oh, gosh, yeah. I don't even yeah. know. I don't even know. So the entire time Michael and I were watching it, because we watched it first, uh, like I think I just kept sending texts to Diana and Tom that were just like, deadliest illusions. It's bad sh-. Like, I thought it was like a documentary. Like, I didn't know what you guys were watching. <laughs> Oh, it was God. like that train wreck you can't look away and you just have to keep watching and it's just there's so many there's you don't know what's happening and to this yeah, th- to yeah. this end about spoilers I'm not even sure I could spoil it because I don't know what happened I don't actually understand what happened can, can, will I, you, you guys just like give a summary of like what the movie I'll is I'll give a summary can I give a summary yeah, yeah. god <laughs> alright so Kristen Dumbledore Potter um, <laughs> is an author. Yes, uh, and and I got that. Yes, she has two kids, um, yep. and a husband. It the husband is either Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney, oh, whichever one. Oh wait, maybe I, it is. Yeah, it's Dermot. Is it? Who, yeah, who it was can tell? Dermot. Who can tell? Yeah, it was Dermot. Oh, it's the other one. It's yeah. Dermot McRoney. Nope. Yeah. It's Dermot. yeah. <laughs> okay, so, we're sorry. playing that. We're playing that game next, so, so, next episode. So she's got a husband. Um, and she wants to write another book. Um, but apparently when she writes a book, she puts <laughs> all of her heart and soul into it and she gets obsessed with it. So to help take care of the kids, she has to hire a nanny. Yes. So she hires a nanny from a nanny agency and obnoxious things ensue. <laughs> um, cigars. and there's, a, there's yeah, there's, there's a, a lot, lot of, of like cigar we, smoking. There's a lot of like weird attraction with like the nanny and the husband and her and the husband and the nanny and everyone's horny. Everyone's very horny in the movie. Yes. That is very I, true. I remember saying that a lot. I was like, why is everyone so horny? I would like, <laughs> I was like, this isn't how people are. I don't I just, think. I also would like to talk about the timeline of this movie. Oh my movie, God, it's so right? crazy. Because like one second they're like hiring her. Yeah. And the next second yeah. they're going bra shopping for her and she's touching her, her breasts, which yeah, I. One- so I, I don't understand. And then the next thing she's talking about how she's part of the family and that she loves her. And I feel like this is like all over the course later. of like three days. I thought the same thing. I was like, it's three days. She's like, we're going to go shopping because you don't have clothes or something. And then she goes in and I'm like, oh, she's going to buy her a dress. And it's bras. And she's in the room with her, basically like rubbing Touching on her boobs her for no reason. I'm like, why is she grabbing her boobs right now? I don't understand. Also, and I was like, I, I don't know. I feel like with certain friends, like after I reach a certain point, I might, if I go to a store, like try on bras in the same fitting room with like 
one of my best friends, but not with like a rando or someone I casually know and or someone like, I work for. Yeah, yeah, my employer that I'm a nanny so, for. And, but then three seconds later, they're talking about how incredible it is that she's in her life and like how grateful and like I love you and you're part of our family now. And I'm like, hasn't this been like three seconds? Like I don't the, this like the bra thing happened three days later and this is the next day. We're like, what is the timeline? I don't understand. And and so, and so they hire the nanny to free up her time so she can write. Yeah. She never writes. She never, ever writes. (laughs) But when she does, she handwrites. She (laughs) handwrites. She's handwriting a novel. (laughs) I'm like, okay, where's the typewriter? Because she should just be sequestered in a room, typing away while the nanny watches the kids. She's also handwriting. Laying on her belly, topless by her pool. Yes. <laughs> that's how novelists work. So then she's smoking cigars whenever, every well, ten minutes. Whenever she's but when writing. she smoked it. So we, I think, what we figured out is when she was smoking the cigars, whatever scene that was, was happening fantasy. wasn't actually happening. She was like, because she ta- they talk. So they talk about how like she gets too involved, and at one point, like the psychologist, like the husband's like, it's happening again, and like I think the friend what we're who was supposed a psychologist, to yeah. infer is that. During the time she's smoking the cigars, some of the scenes aren't happening. So, like that bathtub scene, I'm not sure if it actually yeah, happens or happened. if it's like the her like too far into like the novel that she's going crazy. Yeah, the whole thing. Like I've never even thought that that. I just assume she's a weirdo and smokes cigars, and she holds him <laughs> like she holds a joint. I've never seen anything. Like and then like. I, the whole movie, I didn't know what was real and what wasn't real. I, that, that was the problem. Like, I couldn't yeah, figure that yeah. out. But I think we figured out the cigar thing was supposed to be the was cue like that it. was she yeah. was in fantasy world. I don't know. Tom has talked nothing about the cigars for a week. It's just so weird. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, like, I've smoked cigars before. But, like, I don't know. It, it, she smoked cigars like it was pot. To Maybe like, it was. Maybe it was a giant joint. Could be, could be. Maybe that's why it was all so crazy. But like at one point, so like the friend gets murdered. Yeah. And her alibi is, or one of the things she tells her husband is, well, I got up to smoke. And then I went to turn off the light. (laughs) So like, what? Is it real? That, I I don't know. It was very, yeah. (laughs) Well, also it was clearly filmed in wintertime. And they kept trying to tell you it was summertime. Oh, <laughs> and like there were no leaves on any of the trees. It was very strange. Like, why didn't they just call? Like, pretend they were filming in winter. I don't. I don't understand. Yeah, it was. It was and, funny because they were like out by the pool, yeah. and the one girl's wearing a sweater while she's like half topless with yeah, like because yeah. it was clearly like fifty degrees and clearly fall. And then the weirdest one was the day where the Dominic, whatever his name is, Dumbledore McMurney or whatever his name is. <laughs> He he takes the uh, he takes the nanny to drop the kids off at school. Oh yeah! <laughs> but then you see them later that night. They're still driving around at nighttime. Like where happened yes. to the kids? Where did the so, kids go? There was no sense of time. <laughs> I'm no. telling you, there was. It would be bright in the middle of the day, and then it would be night, like a second yes. later. It We're was like, so how confusing. much time has passed? Yeah, <laughs> they just dropped kids off in the morning. Now it's showing them going to dinner at night, and I'm like, wait, yeah, where? Like are the literally kids? <laughs> from the transition, like dropped off the kids, and now they're talking while it's dark, and you're like, what the and heck they just hired happened? her to take care of the kids. But no one's taking care of the kids, and both of the parents are just hanging out with the nanny. Yeah. Like, who's with the kids when the know. parent is with the nanny? Guys, it's bonkers. I, I have never experienced anything like this. Uh, I just, I don't even know. the And then the end. Like, oh, God, Okay, yeah. the end. So, all right. all right. So, like, scissors in the, the friend's neck, yeah. dead. Um, they, they Mom sh- has to investigate. Yes. yes. Which mom... Gets blamed for it, right? Yes, Kristen yep. Davis gets. She blamed. gets blamed yeah. for it because they they have a video of her going into this office, and then the next thing you know, Dylan, what? Whichever what did we decide? One. What did we said his name is Dermot. Dylan. Dermot. Dermot. <laughs> Dylan McDermott. Dumbledore McRooney. <laughs> <laughs> 
so he is in the shower, and the next thing I know, his stomach is getting slashed by the oh nanny. Oh, my God, yeah. Well, what was funny in that scene was he's standing in the shower, and I'm like... His butt. No, no, no. Well, no, yeah, his butt. But there no. was a lot of butt in this. When he turned around, I'm like, why does his stomach look so weird? But it was clearly because they were going to slash him, and oh. so they had a prosthetic, <laughs> prosthetic on him. And I'm like, God, he looks... <laughs> Disturbing with his stomach looks so disturbing. <laughs> yes. He, yeah. Oh gosh. Like, so then she the, the nanny comes in and starts talking in like these weird voices, like yeah, going back and yeah. forth. And now we finally learn that this nanny apparently it's has crazy. split personalities. Yeah, yeah. So also the nanny is supposed to be like part of that family. And I mean this happened in oh, real right. life like three oh, or yeah. four years ago, yeah. where there were all these kids where like this family had these kids and like Chained them to the bed. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. like which Kristen Davis finds out by going by to going talk to, to the, the weird talking, aunt. Yeah, talking yeah. to the weird aunt. Who, so instead of Googling Yes. The name anything, yeah. she the goes name. and visits this this aunt who apparently also, also has, has split, split personalities. personalities. <laughs> and she's like talking to like herself and then she kicks the dog and that's awful. And I wanted to cry and kick her. And then you think she's talking to somebody else. But so they try and say the nanny has split personalities because of this traumatic event, but also it's hereditary because the aunt yeah, also the aunt also has Why? <laughs> like what? <laughs> so crazy. Oh my God. So <laughs> We find out that she has split personalities. She has now sliced the stomach of this man apart. And then... <laughs> Who <laughs> doesn't try and fight? No, he just, no. like, lets her, her, like, slash him right in the stomach. So the like, nanny now starts talking to herself between her two personalities, yeah. going back and forth. And Kristen Davis appears. And the next thing I know, Kristen Davis is, like, hugging her, telling her that everything's okay after she just tried to murder her and her husband. While her husband's like laying like on the laying floor, on the bleeding, floor, bleeding out, like it's okay. I'm going to take care of you. I love you. And I'm like, what is what? happening? How much time has passed? And where are the kids? And where are the kids? <laughs> no one's taking care of the kids. Uh, and meanwhile, her best friend is dead, and her husband is. I don't know. I thought he was dead at that point, but apparently he wasn't. No, because then she goes to visit the grave of the friend and then yeah. goes and visits this girl who is now in this really weird dress from like. Yeah, now she's a child. Sh again. Now she's yeah. childlike and back yeah. in this dress. And then the end. Oh, we don't yeah. know what happens at the end, right? Like So who, sequel, obviously. Who oh, my leaves, God. Yes, please. Who leaves that mental institution? Is it Kristen Davis or is it the crazy nanny? Yeah. Yeah. What happens? Or someone else. Yeah. Maybe it was the aunt. Maybe Guys. it was the aunt the whole time. Well, I also I love that she was probably committed for committing murder and is in like the least secure mental facility that you've ever seen where like anybody could walk into any room at any time. And she had all this. Stuff in her yes. room, like <laughs> it was like a toys. child's room. And, like, yeah, it was very strange. Very like, strange. why would she resort back to being a child? Because when she was her normal self, she wasn't childlike. She no. wasn't childlike at any point during the entire movie until the Til very then. end. And then all of a sudden, she's talking like she's like five. And, and then there's like, some. What? There are some weird flashbacks with her brother and stuff too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like oh out of gosh. nowhere. Yeah, guys. It's bonkers, mm -hmm. bonkers, and I know we just spoiled the whole thing, but go watch it anyway. Oh my god, so a hundred percent. It doesn't matter, even if you know exactly what's going to happen. Go experience it. Oh and my let us god, know what you so I feel like the whole time you're still, even knowing all of this, when you're watching it, you're still going to be like, "What is happening?" Well, my I was watching, it and I'm like, "What that?" Then I looked it up, and like Kristen Davis is a producer on it. And I'm like, wait, she chose to do this project and act in it. <laughs> like this was she even like, had a Sex in the City money? I don't oh my maybe. God. I don't it's... know. Doesn't she do a lot of like Lifetime Hallmark stuff though? No? I have no idea. I don't know. Um, I don't know if she does. She is in a really sad Christmas movie that's on Disney Plus now because it was an ABC Family uh, movie called Three Days. Uh, where, um, spoiler alert, she dies. 
But then her husband gets to go back and relive the last three days of oh, her life with her. That sounds depressing. Um, and I hard, I hard cry every the, time I watch it. Um, the nanny is Greer Gra- uh, Grammer. Yeah, it's Kelsey, Kelsey. Grammer's yeah. daughter. Stop. Bravo. Yeah. 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 Just in case we were all wondering, that's who the, the nanny is. Well, oh, and also she did not work for the nanny agency. Oh, yeah. Which I, we don't have to spoil everything. Well, I mean, if you've listened, this like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I don't think that was a big spoiler that you need. Like compared Cat, to her, cats out of the bag. <laughs> yeah, her oh, slashing uh, Dumbledore McRooney on the stomach <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Oh um, gosh! That's anyway, the name of the episode is we, Dumbledore McRooney. <laughs> <laughs> we just had to talk about this movie with everyone oh, my God, it was so because good. it was so so crazy. We were so like, there's crazy. so much content. Like, it has to be everyone's. Because I said, good. I said it was gonna be my something good because I was really excited about it. And then Michael's like, no, it. Every, we need like a full 15 minutes to talk about the craziness <laughs> of this. Thing. It was just the most insane movie I think I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, like, gosh. what it turned into and what I thought it would be were not the not nearly the same thing at all. <laughs> I didn't know what I was expecting from it, but it was not that. And it was definitely one of those, like we were, it's, it came out the week that like the year anniversary of Tiger King came out. And I think Diana posted on her Facebook, like deadly guys, deadliest solutions is the new Tiger King. Why isn't more people talking this about is this? True. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because like, I feel like certain things happen and like the whole internet talks about them, and I haven't seen anyone posting anything about this. Yeah, people need to get on Deadly Illusion. Yeah, I agree. I think that's it. I think that's what we got. Yeah. So this Saturday, the will run for virtually live race. Looking forward to that. Woo woo! Um, thank you all for listening. Please continue to tell your friends about us, um, interact with us on social media, meet us in person, do all that fun stuff. Go watch this ridiculous movie. (laughs) And that'll do it for today. And so for Aaron, Michael, and Diana, this is Tom, and we will see you later. Bye. Bye, Bye, friends.